We explain the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League Championship of 1943. The first All-American Girls Professional Baseball League Championship was to be played between the two Wisconsin teams of the four. The Bells and manager Johnny Gottslieg had put together an amazing season. With a team batting average of .246, they led the league in hits, runs, on-base percentage, home runs, stolen bases, and RBIs. Yet despite all these stats, they'd only won the first half of the season and came in third for the second half. The winners of the second half were the Kenosha Comets and their manager Josh Billings. The Comets boasted the talents of Shirley Jamison and Ann Harnett, who both were the original models for the uniforms and some of the first players to sign, and they kept their batting averages way above 200. Jamison led the league in stolen bases and runs scored. Harnett was named the best third baseman in the league. The Comets also had Helen Nikki Nickel, Phyllis Sugar Cone, and 15-year-old Audrey Wagner. But of course, the Bells had 33-game winner Joanne Winter and 26-game winner Mary Nesbitt. The Best of Five series opened September 3rd with Mary Nesbitt pitching against Helen Nickel. Racine would win that game 6-2. Game 2 was played in the rain with Mary Nesbitt pitching again, adding two and two-thirds innings. One paper described the Southpaw as having ice in her veins when the score was down. She was all business when pitching to her catcher and fellow Chattanooga player, Irene Choo Choo Hickson. The Bells would win Game 2, 7-4. However, the game that stands out in most of the newspaper accounts of the day is Game 3. Mary Nesbitt was once again given the start against Helen Nickel, who herself had 31 wins that season. The Bells and the Comets had faced each other multiple times in the regular season, with Bells having a record of 22, Comets 36. The Bells famously gave tribute to Babe Ruth by calling their shots throughout the series' games. Before the series, they had told the news that they would win the series by three. Confidence was extremely high because they had won a 10-game winning streak in the first half of the season to win their pennant. Game three came down to the strength of pitching. Nesbitt allowed eight hits and two walks, and Nickel only six hits and five walks. The game went back and forth between hits and steals, pop-up sacrifices, and grounders. The teams were tied until Racine opened up a big eighth inning. Hickson doubled and then stole third, Kurz walked and then stole second, Perlick walked loading the bases, and then Dapkiss hit to the left, scoring Hickson and Kurz. Nesbitt bunted and scored Dapkiss. The Racine Bells were the champs.